All right, everyone. Welcome once again. It is Friday. Kurt Anderson and myself. This is the Manufacturing E-Commerce Success Series. We're happy today to come to you on what day is it today, Kurt? Manufacturing Day. Yes, it is. Let's say that together on three. Ready? What is today? One, two, three. Manufacturing, Manufacturing Day. Day. All right. So, hey. Yeah. Happy Friday, everybody, man. This is just such an amazing, incredible day. What a great celebration. It's it's better than whatever your favorite holiday is. How's that one, Damon? So I don't know. I, you, I, you, anyway, you get the idea. So guys, happy yeah, Friday. Man. First Friday of the month is Manufacturing Day. We've got Diane Bigger here already. Diane, happy Friday to nice. you guys. Man, drop Damon a note. You want to come on stage? We're just bringing, we're just bringing anybody, yeah. here, right? So hey, I want to do quick introductions here. So this... I got to go right. This guy here, right below me, is Mister Think Bigger himself, the the king of networking, Dan Bigger. Happy Friday to you, brother. How are you? Good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Good hey, to be it's, here, host. It's great. All right, I'm going over to this guy now. Over there, this handsome devil, David Chrysler. How are you, dude? What's happening, man? <laughs> Uh, thanks for having me, guys. It's always uh, always fun to share the stage with you all, and super excited that Mr. Think Bigger is going to be here and sharing his insights about manufacturing today. In the house himself, like I'm, like, I'm, I'm kind of starstruck. Greg, miss you, dude. You're like you're supposed to be clicking the link. You're supposed to be get on stage with us, dude. You're supposed <laughs> to be up here. So get yeah, up here right now. So hey, we've got Whitney. Now I, I just want to set Damon. I just want to set the record straight. I think on Monday. Like she broke my account. I don't know, like 200, yeah. we, like, we had like hundreds of comments. It was 200 plus comments for that, for, that live for Whitney. stream. Like, crazy. like Whitney, I've never had a, a situation experience with a LinkedIn live. And Damon, I think we've done a couple of these, right? I've never two had two or three, right? Where we've had someone that was showered with that much love. So I don't know. Let's yeah. see if we get the chat box fired up today. So guys, if you're out there, if you're with us, please drop a note. We are here celebrating manufacturing day and how critically important it is to as much as we love it man it's just critical to our economy to our friends our families our communities mr dan bigger let's kick off with you brother how important to you is manufacturing how important is manufacturing to you i'm actually going to go to our chat yesterday um which was host hosted by uh, the obsidian group and um you know, they, they really just brought everyone in and, and talked about the stories on how you got started in manufacturing and what it means to you. And to hear some of the groups, you know, that's been coming there for three years, yeah. hear some of their stories and, and how they got started, you know, just some incredible stories. Okay. So let's, yeah. let's take it a step further. You are a Pittsburgh man at heart. Am I correct? Correct. Okay, that like one of the most, you know, kind of the founding, yeah. right? Of my, my, as a matter of fact, my daughter's studying the Industrial Revolution right now. Pittsburgh comes to mind. Just share, like, growing up in Pittsburgh, what, you know, how important is manufacturing in the Western Pennsylvania area? It's a blue collar city. So that's really the, you know, the whole, whole premise of everybody growing up is, is you're, you become a hard worker because that's what the city was built on. It basically won us the war and built half the country. So, there's really That's nothing awesome. else to say. And now now it's re reinvented itself and it's a tech hub. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Pittsburgh is, boy, if you haven't been there, what a dynamic, incredible, wonderful city. You know, amazing, uh, you know, global uh, global level universities with Duquesne, Pitt, Carnegie Mellon, of course. Oh, my goodness gracious, dude. My my I, my pacemaker just kicked in. Nicole Donnelly yeah. here is on, is on the oh stage. Oh, my gosh. Greg, miss you. You have the link. Val, you're supposed to be up here. So, Nicole, happy Friday to you. Happy Manufacturing Day. We have Nicole Donnelly from the Donnelly Marketing Group. So, Nicole, we're going around the stage, and I know, like, you need to cut out here shortly. So, can you share with us how – I know you have a long legacy of entrepreneurship in your family – manufacturing in your it runs in your blood talk about why is manufacturing so important to you your family our economy oh so great i love this love this question so it's just the backbone of our economy right it's just everything everything starts and ends with manufacturing so my dad actually owned a manufacturing business and so it's very very personal to me so i'm i just so excited to be celebrating all those wonderful manufacturers out there who are doing great work every day it's awesome 
Well, that is wonderful, Nicole. Thank you for joining us. We've got Greg miss you. Greg, give a give a little wave there, man. We look at that handsome devil. God. So all right. Yeah. I, Greg, I'm gonna hit you in a second. David, I want to come back over to you, my friend. You are you are the king of process of wit as Whitney mm -hmm. just said. Dude, last time you were on a stage here, I'm still blown away by you. Why is manufacturing so important? What's it mean to you, your family, your community? What's manufacturing to you? Yeah, thanks, Kurt. I mean, you know, for me, I, I grew up in manufacturing. So, uh, you know, I joked about it on the Twitter chat yesterday. Uh, but, you know, my parents owned two different print manufacturing uh, businesses as I was growing up. So, you know, I was destined to be six foot tall, uh, I, you know, <laughs> possibly play in the NBA. But, you know, here I am at, at five foot eight because of, you know, the chemicals I was exposed to as a, a young child running around in, in areas I shouldn't have been in, uh, in manufacturing facilities. You know, uh, I remember riding on forklifts when I shouldn't have been and all of the fun adventures. <laughs> Ventures yeah. that you can have being a kid uh, in your parents' manufacturing business. So, yeah, I have, you know, a lifelong connection to it and I've been in it and around it um, my entire professional career. And I think, you know, from my standpoint, one of the things I'm really passionate about and we're, we're talking about, you know, being excited about manufacturing in general, but, um, you know, I took a pretty unconventional path, as some would say, to do what I do today and and achieve the things that I have in my past. And and so for me, sharing, you know, that success means different things to different people and encouraging the next generation to explore manufacturing, skilled trades, all of the things that are out there, because I think too often people have this impression of what manufacturing is and that, you know, it's all about getting your hands dirty and different things. And while that, you know, 100 percent true, there's tons of other opportunities that touch manufacturing as a whole. And so just opening up those those kind of doors and, and talking about all the fun I had and, and all the impact it's had on my life. Um, you know, that, that's what it means to me, why I'm so passionate about it, why I love doing this. It's just super genuine people, uh, people that like to work hard, people that like to show up every day and, you know, people like the, the, the group on this panel. It's just, it's tr a tremendous, tremendous community, uh, of people. All right, Damon, there's number one, right? <laughs> yep. Um, yep. Moment of silence right there, moment number one. So, David, yep. thank you, dude. That was absolutely amazing. Love it. Again, David Chrysler here, guys. You want to connect with David on LinkedIn. Let's roll. Let's go over to Madison, Wisconsin right now. So, hey, how about the Badgers, right? Greg, miss you. What is manufacturing? How? Why is it so important to you, you your world? Share a little bit with us. Yeah, let's – can you hear me Okay. We can hear you perfect. Okay. Brother. Yeah. Let's let's talk about manufacturing and not the Badgers right at the moment. Okay. Uh, You're going to turn it around, man. You got a great we're new turn coach. It around. We're going to turn it around. Coach Jim. So anyway, that's go right. Ahead. That's right. Um, I actually, uh, out of everybody in this panel, I I actually kind of think of myself as a, a manufacturing immigrant. Um, I don't have the background in manufacturing. I'm a I'm a marketing guy. And I've spent in my family, uh, like Nicole's, that's part of her family roots. My families were academics. Uh, I, you know, I'm horrible mechanically, but um, I, my Me wife too. out for that. Yeah, right. But, um, but uh, what happened with me is um, I decided I had a number of clients, like most marketers all over the place. And I had a coach who said, you should really niche in something. And I'm like, well, we really like this manufacturing client really likes us and we're right. seem to be doing good work for it. So we said, let's niche in manufacturing, you know, knowing not really knowing too much even about the industry. And this is like, you know, four or five years ago. And now, like, as soon as we got into it, I just could not believe how amazing the industry is in, in terms of not only what David was saying about the people and the pride people have in the industry, but as I mean, as an immigrant to the industry, it's provided me with so much work and so much opportunity. And I feel like it's, I put a post up there today on LinkedIn about this is an industry that can propel this country forward in so many ways. And, uh, and I feel like it's, it's, 
you know, like I said, I've worked in a lot of different sectors and in niches, and this just seems like this beacon that can lift us up in so many ways. So, I, you know, I just feel, you know, fortunate and blessed just to be on this stage. And, you know, I, when I go to manufacturing plants, I'm just like, wow, I'm just dazzled by all the brilliant minds I see. So just happy to be here. Okay. <laughs> it's just coming from live from Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. Take a yeah. moment and just savor what we heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I want to, I want to unpack a couple things right there, Greg Mishu. Now, number one, thank you for being an immigrant and thinking for, thank you for bringing your superpowers, your talents, your passion to the manufacturing world. And I feel comfortable saying that, that I'm Mr. Manufacturing Authority. Dude, manufacturing is welcome guys like you with open arms. And I think what's critically important here with this conversation, this really segues what David just said. There's so much opportunity that like, you know, you're, you know, Hey, I'm not mechanical. I'm not, you know, but look at, you've brought an, an academic background, mm -hmm. your passion and helping and we're And I want to go around everybody, but we're going to come back to you about your digital twin, but you've brought just such a great aspect to help elevate manufacturing and all these dif different aspects are critical for our manufacturers to be, you know, best in best in breed global competitive dude you're like giving me chills man this is just so good dan bigger let's come back to you brother okay you've had a great career in manufacturing you are passionate for for manufacturing again you could have gone to different industries what attracted you to manufacturing i got into it completely by accident <laughs> <laughs> so we have an immigrant and we have an accidental manufacturer let's hear your story dude yeah, I was working for a, a, a rental car company and I was looking to get into outside sales. I took a job with Budweiser, which is in manufacturing. So, right. you know, manufa Budweiser led to log home, the log home industry, which led to printing, which led to injection molding, which led to extrusion. And now I'm in software. That man, dude, you've thrown on a lot of different hats. And, and the cool thing is, Dan, because you have covered so many different aspects of manufacturing, like you have a, a maybe a vast different perspective. And like as Greg's sharing, what you know, how do you see it a little bit differently? And or, you know, talking to young people, mm -hmm. why, why do you feel that there's so much incredible opportunity in manufacturing? I just think it's 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 the and it's something that I promote all the time, but it's working together. You know, I've worked for companies that live in these little silos. And, and really, a lot of the things that I learned was when I worked in the log home industry. Um, the log home industry was a very, very niche industry, and it was fighting everything else. It was fighting mm -hmm. conventional stick built manufacturing housing, mm -hmm. concrete housing, everything. So they stuck together and they worked together uh, to forward, you know, the log home industry as a whole and, and each other. Right. You know, so we would reach out to each other and try to sell each other's products. Right. So really that, you know, a lot of the beliefs that I have, cause I was on their council for a couple of years. Um, you know, a lot of the things that I believe I've learned from other people. Right. And, and that was a really good group of people that actually, you know, dealing with code issues and, and, and all the different things that came up. Um, it was, it was just a, it was just the, how everyone just came together for the common purpose of lifting everybody. Absolutely. So I, right, that's a perfect question. Nicole, do you have another minute or do you need to run? I got to run. I got to run, guys. All right, Sorry. Nicole, thank you for joining us. Thanks Happy so Manufacturing much. Day. See you later. So, Have a great day. Val, I think Val might be on vacation, but Val, you know, there's yeah. so many dudes on the stage. Val, if you're out there, I think you might yeah. have a link. You got to come up here with us. But let's talk. All right, since you talk about community, David has talked about the Twitter group. Dan, you are just an amazing group. Let's talk community. David, I'm going to go to you first. How, you know, like you've talk about your journey, how like you, you know, coming into this manufacturing world on LinkedIn, on Twitter, what has the community, the online community done for you, you personally, uh, for you uh, professionally, what's that look like in your world in the past, uh, maybe since COVID, I guess, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, um, yeah, I kind of tell the story. I worked for a really large company for, for the majority of my professional career. And, mm -hmm. you know, that company grew through acquisition, um, and so the majority of my networking connections, community, all of that was internal to that one business, you know? And so for me leaving that, and I left there in 2018, um, leaving that was, you know, <laughs> I'll never forget, yeah. you know, kind of being then out on your own and saying, yeah. man, like, 
boy, I don't know anybody. <laughs> you know? That, that had been a, was that scary? I mean, it had to been yeah. a big leap of faith, right? Yeah, 100%, 100% it was scary. And, you know, you kind of quickly realize what that networking and community really means. And boy, when you put yourself out there, yeah, I, I said this earlier today on, on, on another show, but, but I just mean it from the bottom of my heart. It, it's, it's tremendous to me because I've never been somebody that's been, you know, super extroverted. Right. And so for me, putting myself out there in these situations that made me personally uncomfortable and sharing my story and talking about personal things and saying what I'm struggling with and what I'm working on and what I'm trying to build from a, a business aspect doing that. Um, I could not imagine my life today without having gone through all of that and the uh, relationships and connections that I've made. I mean, I, you know, even what, maybe a year ago, 18 months ago, I didn't know anybody on this panel. Right. And the power of connection and community and just, you know, that that kind of genuinely showing up for people, uh, it's been tremendous. I, I literally could not imagine my life today without the interactions that I have on, you know, a daily, a weekly basis with people in the manufacturing, you know, world in uh, across social, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of that. So it's um, for anybody that's out there that may be hesitant or reserved. Uh, I, I really just encourage you to to take whatever step you feel is appropriate for you, whether that's putting a comment in the comment section of one of these. You will be blown away by the people that reach out to you and that are genuinely interested in what you're doing. Um, and the more that that kind of cycle repeats itself. Uh, you, that's what energizes me today. It's not about like growing my business. That's all like, it's all bonus, honestly, like yeah. that's bonus stuff. Yep. The thing that you feel when you connect with somebody and you can make an intro for them, or you can help them through a problem. Um, it's like that, you know, I talked about like what success means. That is what su success means to me today. Uh, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, it meant something completely different. And, you know, so I'm, I'm super fortunate and feel really blessed to have met all of you here. Um, and, and that's kind of the mission moving forward. So this is, this is what it's all about, man. And right back at you, brother. That was phenomenal. Nice. And, uh, Greg, I'm going to slide down to you, dude. So you and I actually, like we go pre COVID, you and I met at manufacturing happy hour with our dear buddy, uh, Chris Lukey. Talk a little bit about, you know, so collectively, you know, what you shared earlier, four or five years ago, you decided to go all in on manufacturing. You and I uh, connected with Jeff Long, uh, Dave Griffith, if you're, you know, any of those guys, a uh, great, amazing group. What's community been for you as far as like, you know, moving forward and why for uh, manufacturers, why that's so important? Well, I mean, I'll echo what David said. And, uh, you know, I came into this not knowing anybody just like um, David did and, um, <clears throat> I met, uh, Chris Lukey and Jeff Long, actually Jeff Long reached out to me, said, Hey, I see you're in this. Um, and I met Chris Lukey <clears throat> naturally you're going to run into Kurt Anderson if you meet anybody in this industry. So I met K Kurt Anderson and then, you know, the floodgates open. Um, but then I got to meet Damon and of course, Dan, who is ubiquitous in the industry as well. So, um, bigger than life, Dan bigger. And, you know, so it's just been great to, to be a part of the community. But, um, I, I would say that like, uh, as I mentioned before, I, there's few other industries that are quite like this and how people are willing, like David said, to reach out and help each other. And I will tell you that over the past year, I've really pulled back on my LinkedIn presence. I've done a little experiment and because a lot of my clients, I'm working with small um, sales and marketing teams, and maybe even not even a marketing presence, just a sales leader, and nobody's on LinkedIn. And I'm trying to emulate to deliver marketing as best I can with someone who is not doing what David's doing or what Dan's mm -hmm. doing and getting really active on the channel. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been easy and it sure hasn't been fun and it hasn't been as productive is getting out here and doing the good old fashioned networking. So, right. uh, I, uh, you know, to David's point, 
you know, if you need help, there's plenty of resources out here. A lot of people on this channel will help you get started and plenty of content out there to help you get going. But just leave comments, do whatever you can. Just become part of the community. Man, I absolutely love that. Damon, I have a, I have a question for you. So I went around asking everybody, what, why is manufacturing? What's it meant to you personally, your family? What is why? What attracted you to manufacturing? What has manufacturing meant to you and your family or your community growing up? Well, I was I was a manufacturer before I knew what it was. That's right. I mean, growing up on the farm, I mean, we actually my dad was always somebody that said, "Hey, we need we need a big trailer to haul equipment on." So we would we would you know a semi load of steel would show up and we would build this kind of stuff. <laughs> And so I was like, I, I mean, I literally, I remember the first, the first industrial accident I had is I burnt my foot with a hot welding coal on the, or whatever slag on the ground, because I didn't have shoes on when I was like 12. It's like, <laughs> Hey, dad saying you can't be around welding like that. Remember I yeah, told you you have yeah. to have shoes like, on. Yeah. It's like, but, go throw a bandaid on it. You're fine. right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and then, then I'm like, yeah, here's what is that? What is that on the, uh, Windex, whatever, yeah, yeah. from Windex, but <laughs> enough, enough of that. But, you know, actually, and so I grew up in that, I grew up yeah. in building stuff and, and, yeah. and those kind of things. And when I found manufacturing as, as the industry, right, you know, you know, you know, equipment came to you and that kind of stuff on the farm. But when you got into, when I got into manufacturing, I was like, holy heck. Yeah. You know, I went to school for engineering accidentally just because I didn't know what right. the hell I was going to do. But I got right. in these manufacturing buildings and I'm like, right. Holy heck, they're right. building this stuff and right. watch how it moves and watch what you make and watch how that powers our economy. And I'm like, damn, this is cool. Right. And, and then I just couldn't get enough of it. Right. And when you, when you look at how it affected me, you know, I was able to work 20, whatever years in companies helping people do it. And now I get to help lots of companies right. with educating and finding resources right. and all the kind of stuff we get to do. And when you look at today, the changes in technology that we're, that we're seeing in everything from equipment to how we talk to people, to how manufacturers market and sell right. and right. educate their customer. It is just, I get so excited about this. Don't know what to say. It is, it has affected me beyond. I, my heart is so full just because I can, because I, I can hang out with people like you guys on a daily basis and gals and people and whatever on a daily basis. I, I just, I can't, I can't explain how much it means to me on a daily basis. It's so much fun. And we have so much potential. Like someone said earlier on the call, if kids aren't looking at this, if they aren't, if parents aren't telling their kids, right. at least go out and look at some manufacturing places, not just because I want to build something I want to be, but if I want to be in technology, if I want to be a finance person, if I want to be a leader, if I want to be an HR, if I want to be in safety, there are so right. damn many places, you know, right. computer science, there's so many things that manufacturers need now because it's a technology hub in here that's creating this stuff it's not just kurt and i in the backyard cutting stuff and building it up anymore right. Right. It, it's it takes tremendous technology to drive these manufacturers when you look at the robotics so i i go on a little bit about this <laughs> but i love it all right everybody moment of silence right there just savor that one damon all right hey i'm gonna run a call for damon man dropping now on. Val's Dude, there. all right, we got Val in the house here. Val, happy manufacturing day to you. How are you, my friend? Are you there? Are you on mute? Can we hear you? Oh, she can't hear us, she said. Can you hear us? You can't hear us? Oh, man, Val's here. Dan Bigger, oh. I was going to talk about. And what? she's in the coolest industry ever. Oh, my God. She's in Fuse Cast. I've taken many, many tours of her facility. It is absolutely incredible. Dan Bigger, let's go back. All right, so if yeah. anybody out there that's not familiar with the Twitter chat group every Thursday, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central, can you please share with everybody what is this wonderful, amazing USA Twitter chat group that you guys have been talking about? Yeah, it's a group we founded about three years ago. Uh, we followed a, a group out of the UK, and um, we just brought a bunch of people together. We talk about a weekly topic that really just helps each other 
help share information that you're good at. So if you're a good social media marketer, if you're good at uh, safety or, or whatever you want to talk about, you know, we allow people to come on, talk about a topic, ask four or five questions a week and, and share information with each other. Right. And it's, and it, it's not very fast paced, right? Is that what I no. hear? Actually, you know what? I was on, I was on two other chats this week and ours is by far the <laughs> fastest. <laughs> I, I personally, I, I have never experienced, I don't know if I've recovered from that day where I hosted one time. It was hands down. David, you're laughing. is like the fastest hour on the planet. Now, yeah. Dan, what even, what, how did you guys even, what made you even think? And I understand you just mentioned like, oh, we found a, a, a comp, you know, a group out of England or whatever. Like, you know, how did that inspire? How did that come together? And what's great is like for folks out there, what I love what you've done if, uh, you know, Greg, you came in, you're like, ah, gee, I don't know many people. Or David, you're like, I don't know any people. What's a great way to socialize? What's a great way to build community? Start the community. Right. What really, what lit the fire for like you, Ruby, I know uh, maybe Paul, Jen Wegman, like what, what inspired you guys? What lit the fires for you guys to get that started? That was the, that was the inspiration was the community and, and, and really just sharing the information, not making it about any one person or any one topic or any one company. Yeah, you know, we we didn't want it to be sales pitchy, and it never has become that. Right. Um, so it, it you know it's it's a way to share information, but it's also a great networking because everybody on that chat each week, you can see working with each other on Twitter, on LinkedIn, outside of uh, social media in the real world, and doing business with each other. I mean, one of the best ones I've heard was uh, Paul Kishi helped yeah. uh, Snaptron do their rebrand. Right. Right. And those are two people that are, are relatively active in our, in our group, but now they're working together and they just did a huge rebrand over the last year. So, I mean, those are the kind of things that really do it for me is, is when, you know, people start working together and talking together and then actually things actually progress into a business relationship and it, and it's successful and everybody's happy and it's, it's, it's a, it's a win for everybody. Absolutely. David, I'm coming over to you, brother. I know you've been doing an amazing job putting out tons of videos. Incredible. Like, I think you're like the, you're like the modern day Peter Drucker to me, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you're, I hope you dig. I'm a huge Peter Drucker fan. So I hope you take that as a nice compliment. Uh, yeah. But, that's a, a tremendous compliment. Thank that, you. I, that's what I was hoping. So, uh, you know, let's go there for a second. So see, you know, uh, manufacturers, I just, I just talked to a gentleman, uh, this week, you know, uh, digital immigrant, you know, I'm a Gen Xer, you know, above us are the baby boomers, uh, you know, now before they were resistant, I don't need this website thing. I don't need internet. I don't, you know, da, da, da. now, now the script is flipped. Now they're scrambling and frustrated, discouraged. I don't know what to do. How do you, you do a, a tremendous, tremendous job, kind of like my takeaway in our conversations on how you help kind of like nurture, get that culture, that momentum. Am I correct? Is like, how do you help those folks kind of like turn the corner in manufacturing to, to, to embrace this new uh, online digital age that we're in? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I, I take a systems approach to anything. So, you know, for me, systems break down into planning people, process and technology. And you can apply that framework literally to anything. You can apply it to content marketing. You can apply it to continuous improvement. You can apply it to improving your culture. And for the majority of manufacturers out there, um, you know, they're really great at so many things. And if they just think about it from the standpoint of, you know, it is building relationships, especially if we're talking about, you know, connecting with people, mm -hmm. growing your business from a, a social media standpoint, content marketing standpoint, all of those things, right? It's just about building relationships. You know, the tool itself, it doesn't matter. And and so for me, you know, I, I break down systems the way that I explained it, because for me, I don't care if you're a Microsoft 365 company. I don't care if you love Google platform. I don't care if, you know, you are a, uh, you know, an Oracle customer on the ERP side. I don't care if you love HubSpot or Zoho, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the technology is just the tool. It's the underlying, you know, planning people process part that people need to focus their effort on. And again, no matter if we're talking about content creation and digital marketing, or, you know, we're talking about how to improve your quality management system. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's how I like to think about it in terms of like how you can approach it, 
right? Think about it from your customer's perspective. Where are they at? You know, Greg, I think you mentioned it earlier, right? Like the companies that you've been uh, working with lately, you know, there's not a lot of presence on LinkedIn. At some point, it might not be LinkedIn. Maybe it's some new platform mm -hmm. that hasn't been born yet. So the point is, right? The technology doesn't matter. The platform doesn't matter. But what are the, what's the planning people process aspect of what we're talking about? How are you going to utilize those things to ultimately connect with the people that you need to connect with? Because at the heart of everything, we have to connect with people and have relationships with people. It, it's how everything in our world works. And the kind of faster you get on board with that, the bigger you can grow a company, the more influential you can be for other people, the more help that you can provide to other people. Um, so that, that's how I look at it, how I break it down. And that, that's been my approach to be so active across social platforms to continue to grow my community and to really just try to support other people in, in their journeys. Um, and, you know, it's kind of the rest is taking care of itself. That's awesome. And we have to we have to pause there for that. You, you know, well, hey, you know what? I'm going to interrupt the pause, Damon. I, you know, I hate to say it because you know I can't afford to have David Chrysler on the program anymore because I pre I, I dropped my <laughs> mic so many times that I have to keep buying these darn new microphones because of David Chrysler. So, all right, David, thank yeah. you, brother. Another amazing. Oh, yeah, God, you are so good. This is a so perfect be segue. Go ahead, David. Before we change and segue into something else, Kurt, because Kurt likes to keep going. He's got his notes there. He's going down the thing. I, don't, I have it, no notes today. I'm no. Hey, hey, that's good. That's I'm good. Because usually he's got a pile of notes, and I put like two sentences down to start one of these things, and they just yeah, rolls. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you, Kurt, you know, you're the manufacturing e-commerce guy. Let's hear it from you. What's manufacturing mean to you? How has it affected you, your family, your community? I have a story for you. I have, a, I'm, and, and then I'm Greg Michio. I'm coming to you about the digital twins. So I have, a, I have, a, I have a manufacturing story. I came prepared, Damon. You ready? Awesome. All right. What, what's this? That's an adjustable wrench. It's a crescent wrench, right? Crescent wrench. Crescent wrench. So I'm five years old, 1973. You guys probably weren't even born yet. 1973. Look how young all you guys look. So I'm five years old. <laughs> My father, so my oh, father, yeah. my father's like six, five, full head of hair. He has like the year round tan. I look nothing like him. Right. So great guy. He's still, man, he's still my best friend. He worked for Crescent Tool. Crescent made Crescent wrenches, right? He was like a union yeah. steward or whatever, you know, he was like 20, you know, he was like, I don't know, 29 years old at the time. It's Thanksgiving-ish. It's Christmas-ish, you know, right around that time of year. And I'm five years old. Mom is crying. Dad came home. The Crescent Tool Company was leaving our area to go to a cheaper place. Mm. Family is absolutely crushed, devastated. It's I'm five years old. I'm like, it's it's holiday time. I'm like, is Christmas coming? Like, are we gonna get gifts? I will never forget how devastated our family was by a manufacturer leaving the area. How many and how many families throughout the United States have suffered of jobs going to other countries because we found cheaper places to make these products, right? And so it is very dear to my heart. It is my life purpose, passion for families, little five year olds, and not go through what little and I had hair back then, Damon. So I was like this little blonde <laughs> that kid. Was it. And so it was it was devastating for our family. Dad found a job and it turned, you know, and it actually ironically led to my e-commerce. Uh, career was because he lost that job. I'm not going to bore you guys with that story. But anyway, so I mean, our family was was heavily impacted. And like Dan Biggers from Pittsburgh, he used to live in New York, you go through like the Great Lakes region, you know, uh, Dave, you're in, you're in uh, Detroit, you go through like all through the Rust Belt, man, it's been, you know, Wisconsin to Syracuse, New York, it's been very hit, it's been hit hard with manufacturing jobs going overseas. And I just I am thrilled that we have this renaissance of like bringing these jobs back to the United States. So anyway, it's very dear and personal to me. That's my story, Damon. How was that? And I came prepared. How do you like that? That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Because, oh. you know, it's, it's important for you to share with us too, Kurt. It there, is there is a background there and you, you, you help, uh, people in manufacturing an awful lot and and you get to i mean you see a lot of manufacturers i mean how many of you toured this yeah. year you've toured to off you know, lot oh and wait you know? to and wait to i if wait I'm, i'll be posting on linkedin wait till you see the places i'm going this month so nicole donnelly we're going to texas next week to visit a client 
and I've got some surprises at the end at, at the end of the month. So Dan Bigger, you'll be you'll you'll be loving the worldwide. Uh, uh, I'll be I'll be sharing those on LinkedIn. But you know, again, if we had e-commerce in 1973 for the little Crescent Tool Company, that company might not have had to you know leave the area. You know, so yep. anyway, all right, let's slide down to so David. I was asking you about resistance or like how to make that cultural change. Greg Miss you, you are doing an amazing job with the digital twin. I absolutely yeah. love what you're doing. Can you please share with folks what your whole your the method of your your methodology with the digital twin from a marketing standpoint? Um, so uh, when we when I came into started to work with manufacturers, it's a sales dominated industry. Eighty uh, percent of the Interactions are expected to take place in digital channels by 2025. That's Gartner. 58% um, of the sales process is already completed before a sales interaction takes place. That's according to the Challenger series. Um, you know, the stats are out there that manufacturers need to get into the marketing space and on the, online and doing things like we're doing right now. Um, and so, uh, you know, it seemed to me logically, uh, I saw a presentation on the digital twin. It's a recreation of a product um, or a process in manufacturing. It's used to prototype, test things. I thought, wow, we, we need to create a digital twin of the sales team using content. Okay, so that's the concept. And as we've dug deep into it, you know, at first, like, Sam Gupta once said to me, you know, you, you got to have more to it than that. It just can't. Otherwise, it's just a gimmick. And as we've plum, plumbed the, the concept more, what I've realized and learned as we've really that we as marketers need to get better at sales, that the folks like, you know, Dan Bigger are out in the field conducting the sales. And if we are going to make a digital twin, we have to understand how sales works and have to integrate the strategy. And what I've learned is that marketing and sales are not aligned in most companies. And if they're not, yeah. you're talking about not only are you not making money, you potentially are losing money because you're spending all this money on marketing. In fact, only 33% of manufacturers actually turn their marketing into sales. So I realize that this, you know, if there's something I can bring to the manufacturing table, it's that in the process of making your digital twin, you need to align your marketing and sales and make them come together. And it's been pretty much of a revelation for me personally and for our company to really get up into the sales team and learn sales strategy and then start to work with that the sales team at the get-go before you're rolling out any marketing. And like Damon, you've said to me, big deal. You get a bunch of leads in. If sales doesn't go close it, you got nothing. So mm -hmm. that's that's where the digital twin is and the work we've done and where we're sitting right now. But I, I just think that so many manufacturers are focused and they're so brilliant and they're focused on their products and their processes. We have to get outside of that and look at the customers and what they need and how we can reach all aspects, you know, because manufacturing, what you're doing just doesn't solve that problem. It can help their business in other aspects. Um, and that's a big part of like the challenger sale. But anyways, that's yeah. where we're at with the twin. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And so guys, yeah. again, if you're not connected already, please connect with Greg Mishu Great. on LinkedIn here and check out his website, Windbound, right? Windbound.com. Is that, do I have that correct? Win as in we're going to win the game. Not wind, as this guy is full of a lot of wind. <laughs> we are we are bound to win in this digital twin ex escapade. How's that? So you are. It's win bound. Greg miss you. You have to check out his website, Greg. Your content and what's great about you is a lot of folks like we kid around with marketers about you know being the cobbler's kid with no shoes. You know we're so busy working with clients that we don't ha we don't have the opportunity to work on our, our ourselves our own website. You do a phenomenal job and you are so selfless. One thing, I was just talking to, uh, to somebody about you recently. You do an amazing job where you'll take quotes, you'll take snippets from like Dan Bigger, David Chrysler, Damon. You'll take a bunch of quotes. I know Nicole, a lot of different folks. And you put together like an incredible piece of content 
base and you're promoting these other people and even some, some aspects like some of these folks are even competitors. So I absolutely love what you do on how you promote, you shine a bright light on other people, but you don't walk, you don't talk to talk, you walk to walk by putting out that incredible, yeah. wonderful content, which you also do for your clients. So, all right, let me segue over to Dan Bigger. Dan, is that, is that true? I've never heard that sales and marketing don't communicate or don't get along. Is have you you've never experienced that before, have you? I actually haven't because when I <laughs> to be honest with you, because I when you, I you, when you, I got into you, yeah, you when, when I got that, further right? into manufacturing, I was sales and marketing. You were sales, yeah. So you got along with yourself pretty good, right? Yeah. Well, I sent myself notes back and forth, but we always got along. We always were on the same page. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It wasn't like Fight Club where you're beating yourself up then, right? No, yeah. but I, I agree with you know that's why I mean I follow Greg's stuff because he's totally right. Right. And, and, you know, again, I come from a sports background, so it's almost like having your left tackle totally oblivious to what your right tackle is doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. So if everyone's not on the same page, how do you expect to win? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Dan, from your experience, you you know, great career. You've worked at different companies from Anheuser-Busch to, you know, smaller manufacturers. You're in a SaaS company now. What what do you what situations do you see that have been very successful when marketing and sales do collaborate and do communicate well? How do you break that silo? How do you break that barrier? What what have you experienced? Uh, well, I mean, I'm going to my current experience right now with John. You know, John yeah. and I are on the same page. We talk for hours a day. Yeah. About you know clients, what we're going to do marketing. I know what he's going to do. He right. knows what I'm doing. Right. Um, you know, we're sharing information and and. You know, we're sharing information with our team. So it's it's everybody. We try to keep everyone on the same page. So, again, everybody knows what the play is and how we're going to execute it. Right. And just for anybody out there, that's John Baglino. So, again, you want to. So, all right. Connect with Dan Bigger and you will thank me in probably about three days. All right. So, please <laughs> connect with. Is there anybody in, in, in the chat box? Is there anybody that's not connected here through Dan Bigger? I'm just curious. I, it's hard to imagine that anybody's not connected with us through Dan Bigger. So, Dan, so you're talking about John Buglino. You guys are of Tessa. You're doing an amazing job helping manufacturers with your service. David, coming over to you, brother. Let's stay on that same topic: marketing, sales. What What have you seen in your space? What's going on in that in that aspect? Yeah, I mean, I, I think to add to the conversation, right? It's uh, I, I try to bring it back to a you know a system perspective, and when you don't have the alignment between the planning people process, uh, it's very challenging to you know tackle these really uh, lofty goals in some cases, right? I mean, we're trying to connect with potential prospects. How do we go through? You know, what does that part of the process look like, and then how does that connect to what happens? Uh, you know, on the sales seat, on the sales team side um, and, you know, looking at it from the 10,000 foot view and, and you know, back to exactly what Greg and, and Dan are talking about. Right. How do we look at that from, you know, that 10,000 foot view and then break it down into the detailed uh, to get people working together, collaborating? I mean, one of the things that that I love talking about from a process standpoint is, you know, when we look at ways to improve things. Um, the best way to improve any type of process is by including people that are not only closest to the process, but adjacent to the process before the process, after the process. And so that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about here. I mean, that's to me, the real power of uh, applying a, a kind of systems thought process to any of the things that we're talking about uh, as it relates to sales and marketing. We can talk about that from a, a finance and operations perspective. Again, you can apply this stuff from a, a framework concept to any of the things that we're talking about. So getting comfortable with looking at your processes from a 10,000 foot view, dialing into them, and then bringing the people together that touch each one of those processes that's the way to move the needle forward for any of the goals that you're trying to tackle in any manufacturing business, really in any business, but, you know, in manufacturing, in distribution, in any related service business, right? You can apply this stuff anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like a master class. Like when they, yeah. Like you're going to have to start bringing oxygen, Kurt, so you don't pass out. <laughs> there we go. It's like a man. All right. All right. We're, we're coming into well, time. Let's like, go ahead, Damon. Well, you know, I think I think there's one thing that and, and Greg will appreciate this and and the others on the panel and people listening that are that are really understanding and seeing the changes that are happening. You know, and I said this this morning when we were on, David, 
and I, I've been thinking about manufacturing a lot. And the manufacturers that are reluctant to think about sales and marketing differently are the same manufacturers that will spend millions of dollars on a brand new piece of equipment because their old piece of equipment isn't fast enough anymore, doesn't keep up with everybody else, and they've got to change it. But they won't think that same way about their sales and the fact that they need marketing. I'm sorry. And they have to work together and they have to be out there because, you know, Greg was saying it, people, 80% of the people are, are going to have, or what is it by 2025, 80% of the buying decision is going to be made online before they even talk to somebody uh, or what it's, it's crazy amounts. I mean, this is, this is data. This is not like we think, Oh, I'm a marketing guy. I want to, you know, we got to do it. If you're not, if you're not educating your customers, if you're not, getting really uncomfortable about what you're sharing about your company and why you're a good fit, why you're not a bad fit. And then ultimately this is going to make everybody cringe that I'm talking. I think you got to share pricing online. Mm -hmm. I think it doesn't have to be your final price to somebody, but if you're not going to do that, because if you're not thinking about what that buyer needs to be able to do, the process they need to go through educating so they can make an informed decision about your company and how you can help them and then get to the price of it. You're just putting roadblocks up, roadblocks up. And if we're not making the sales process frictionless, they're going to go to somebody that is, yeah. and they're going to, they're going to buy millions of dollars from that. Somebody that is, we're not talking about a, you know, dollar pan. Right. They're going to go to somebody because they buyers don't care anymore. If I have to, if I have to find the new place where I'm going to drop my five million dollars worth of this kind of work, the the best I'm going to get on Google. I'm going to search it. I'm going to go through it. And I'm going. To, yeah, Valerie's saying this. Valerie's in, in in her kind of business. This is if if we don't change our sales and marketing approach the same way that we're aggressively changing our operations and and making other things good in manufacturing, you're going to get left behind at somebody that is mm -hmm. just the way it is. I'm sorry, I'm jumping off my soapbox. I just, it makes me, you got to do it or you're going to die. It's another moment of silence, Damon. I lived it. I that, lived that. I lived you, that process. Let's hear it, Dan. Let's hear it. it. It took me three years to convince one of my one of my employers to get a new website, but they went out and bought a half a million, two half million dollar machines in over overnight. Yep. And and it, and I remember the website. You did do a great job, by the way. And 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 also, I I want to. I was uh, Val. I'm stood corrected. I said if you connect with Dan Bigger, your your network will explode in three days. Val, I agree with you 100. percent It's about three hours. So three hours. Do yourself a favor if you are new to LinkedIn. You absolutely want to connect with Dan Bigger. Now, Damon, we had a fun little LinkedIn party on Tuesday with folks. We did a little uh, little uh, workshop for folks. Yep. And we talked about the term digital self-serve. And so I think with what everybody in the panel here is, is discussing, David, processes and technology, absolutely with the digital twin and what uh, Dan Bigger is talking about is like, you know, how do you provide that digital self-serve experience where if they're going to do 80 percent and I, I let's let's like savor that word again. You said frictionless. And it's such a different mentality for the manufacturer. We're talking e-commerce. We're talking configurators. We're talking, you know, quote builders on your website. Let the buyer do that process, you know, right? Okay. I know we could go all day. I want to yeah, be mindful yeah. of everybody's time. Everybody here is super busy. Let's wrap up on this. I want to go around the panel. Manufacturing Day. We are here celebrating Manufacturing Day. My dear friend, Greg, miss you. Words of wisdom, thoughts that you want to share about what this day means and uh, for young folks out there or the future manufacturing, just anything that comes to mind, what do you want to share about Manufacturing Day as we move forward? I mean, I just think we got to keep talking about it. And uh, again, I, I really feel in my heart that this is what this country needs. It's, yep. it's, it's it, you know, we everybody goes for the tech world and the bright, shiny objects, but uh, I'm telling you, the manufacturing space um, from a physical, biological and digital aspect. I mean, you're talking about Industry 4.0 manufacturing can bring 
Mm -hmm. such innovation to all three of those components and all those are coming together in our lives and manufacturing is going to be spearheading our our efforts there and we just you just got to keep this train rolling and and talk it up talk it up okay everybody please get let's give a round of applause for our dear buddy greg mishu for yeah, greg, it's been no way doubt, too dude. long since you've been on the stage talking digital twin with us made my day today a manufacturing immigrant that knows it's living it today and speaks so well. Well, thank you for joining the party, yeah. Greg. Thank you yeah. for joining the party thank today. You. And thank you for joining the manufacturing party overall, bringing your superpowers, your passion, expertise. Dan Bigger, you have uh, I, two sets of twins. I don't know if folks don't know that. Two sets of twins. Uh, for young folks out there, what's manufacturing day? What does this mean to everybody? Just kind of share your thoughts, your feelings as we wrap up. I really think, you know, as you look at a manufacturing career, it's about being a part of something that's bigger than yourself. You know, everything that you, everything that you touch on a daily basis is manufactured. So if, if you, if you get up and you go work for a company that builds airplanes or, you know, motors or valves or it doesn't matter what it is, it's going to go into something bigger. That's going to help someone somewhere else. Right. That's really what it's about. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, and I don't know if you guys know this, like uh, like Greg was just saying, all the cool kids are going into manufacturing, by the way. You know, so I mean, and, and when you think about it, like like now what they're saying, like when you get in your car, it's really not even inside a vehicle. It's a technology yeah. piece of equipment, right? Yeah. So, I mean, as, and as you were describing, uh, Damon, you know, manufacturers now, when you walk in, it's really, it's a tech, you know, there's an opportunity even for smaller manufacturers between automation, robotics, like, you know, as these costs keep going down and the scalability in the availability, the opportunities, you know, we're all huge advocates of the MEP network. That's a manufacturing extension mm -hmm. partnerships. You know, they're fighting relentlessly to help manufacturers, you know, on a global scale. So this is just super exciting. David Chrysler, last question for you, my friend, manufacturing day that you want to share for the folks out there. Yeah. I mean, I, I would kind of echo what everybody else is saying on here, you know, sharing stories of how this industry has impacted you personally, the fun that you have, the impact that you can have on other people's lives um, and, and just continuing to build on that. You know, there's no doubt that uh, I, I come from a, a print manufacturing background. That's where the majority of my uh, expertise is, has lived. And, you know, you would hear things like, well, print is dead. Print is being replaced by mm -hmm. technology and all these different things. And, you know, it, it, it touches manufacturing even broad, more broadly than just in print. And the reality of it is that all of these industries will continue to change and new technologies will be introduced, new automations will be introduced. And what will happen with that is they won't be replaced and go away. The jobs will need an increasing level of skill. And so, you know, yeah. people interested in tech, there's a real place for you in manufacturing because as these, you know, large organizations start to invest in those automation pieces and, uh, you know, e even from a visibility standpoint, when we talk about ERP and, uh, you know, MRP and all these other components that, you know, touch on um, visibility, um, you know, there's a real place for anybody that's interested all the way from, yeah. you know, shop floor. I love building things. I love to get my hands dirty, uh, all the way to, you know, software engineer, uh, accountant, finance tech, CFO, like it spans the gamut. So there is for sure a place for you within manufacturing. I encourage you to, you know, visit your local MEP, go out on some tours, get into some of these organizations and connect with the people because that will sell you uh, on being a part of manufacturing. When you start to meet some of the, just the the genuine people that I guarantee you will meet uh, and Dan Bigger, you know, we got to change the six degrees of Kevin Bacon to the six <laughs> degrees of uh, Dan Bigger. And yeah, so I, connect with him degrees first Dan and, uh, you know, you are guaranteed to not only think bigger, uh, but to be connected to a bigger network yeah. uh, with amazing people. So a thank you. Absolutely. And Damon, can you pull up Diane Byers last comment there? We got to read that for everybody here. Manufacturing, we build products, build networks and communities. We build futures. There's really no words to go beyond that one. Right? Yeah. We, could just, we could just wind down. 
I get Damon. Any right thoughts there. on your end, dude? We're we're gonna we're gonna wrap up. Any no, any no. any last words? Just grateful. You? Just grateful. Hey, how about thank you to Damon and Kurt for doing this every week, basically, and more than that. I mean, you two guys have just been huge for this industry. And, you know, you bring people like these folks together all the time. And I mean, I think everybody who knows you two has just got like huge gratitude to you guys for, for all you're doing for all our careers and for the industry. Well, thank you, brother. Man, yeah. thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. That means the world to me, Greg. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah. I'll tell you, this, you know, guys, and it's an honor and privilege, Damon, to do this every week. I can't express my gratitude to you, brother, every single Friday. We're back on Mondays and we enjoy yeah. this uh, every minute of it. Yeah, and, you know, the big thing is, is we bring on folks, you know, and it's like, it's almost like when you put things out to the world, you know, what you attract, it's like folks of, you know, David, like you were describing earlier, people of integrity salt of the earth and honest to goodness like that's what you find in manufacturing you find dan yeah. biggers you find greg Mishus, david nicole val weber diane you know everybody on whitney gary wood you know everybody on here just amazing incredible people yeah. and it's just such an honor and blessing to be a part of this this group and this network so here's our last words for you today guys thank you celebrate you know if you know a manufacturer give them a pat on the back and like you know as greg's describing you know from any aspect that they're part of that manufacturing world thank them for what they're doing for our economy boy as you guys yeah. go out there for this weekend there's football there's baseball i know we got the mariners are in the playoffs we got all sorts of exciting things going on first time in like what 20 years 21 years first time in 21 years so guys go out there be someone's inspiration man whether it's yeah. your significant other a family yeah. member child parent i don't maybe it's somebody at the maybe somebody cut you off today who knows what they're going through today just be someone's inspiration and thank you for everything you do damon let's take it let's close it out guys if you want to hang out one second we'll close it out with you guys under behind stage damon take it away brother all right kurt thanks so much thanks to everyone in the comments today that that shows up but thanks for helping us celebrate manufacturing day and as kurt said if you know a manufacturer go out and shake their hand give them a pat on the back whatever just tell them we appreciate you thanks to david and greg dan for getting on stage with us val for coming up too so bad we had some tech issues but thanks everyone this is a community that we love to be a part of and we feel honored to be able to share the people that are in it and just share with you and educate as much as we can. And we're going to be back again next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.